Girl, what's my weakness? Cats. Okay, then. Meaning is now streaming live on Facebook. We're putting down our phones and welcome, 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 oh, everyone. I think we're here. To a beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> very special oh. Monday's merch. Slightly delayed. Slightly delayed for technical issues. Dr. Kosky, thank for you for your patience. Yes. Um, <laughs> we're, we're on a new computer, so our sound is not as great. By as a new computer, we mean a different computer, which is old, actually an older computer. An old computer. Right. So, so. Um, which in which not see the comments so we're gonna have to pull, gonna it, pull it up on our phone but thank you guys so much for joining us on this beautiful monday's merch very special monday's merch oh we so are joined exciting. we are joined by none other than dr marcy koski one of our favorite humans on the planet <laughs> from feline behavior and she is here to answer all things about cat behavior so oh, we're really we some... really excited yeah we've got some we've got some, some great stuff. some good stuff or she's got some great stuff to bring to you guys tonight however because it's monday's merch and we have gone like three weeks now without a without a real monday's merch discount for you we are of course going to tell you about our product of the week very quickly is and a good one. because we're talking all things behavior our product of the week this week is cat calm it is made of feline essential cat calm it is made of 80 different herbs 21 minerals and seven exotic plant extracts it's not a sedative it's a complete uh, stress reducer it takes the edge off for your kitties. Um, is that a bad idea? Kitty? That's a bad idea. Okay, I was gonna um, touch my phone up there so we could <laughs> see. Like, don't do, don't even bad touch. Idea. Don't even touch the computer. Don't touch um, the buttons. So guys, we are offering this, this week only. Um, link is in our bio and Lindsay or Trish is going to drop it here in the comments. I couldn't put it in the description because we're on a different computer and I don't have all those links. I don't know the link to our shop, but you guys can get it this week only. Cat Calm for 5% off using the discount code Calm five. What's that? Calm five. Calm five. C A L M number five. This week only. Calm five. Calm five. Calm five. <laughs> yes. Which is, <laughs> we are going to try to calm. We're going to try to calm right down now. now. Very sorry for the delay. Bit. For the, um, I, you guys already know that I tend to sweat when Dr. Koski is in the house, anyways, because she is so amazing. She speaks cat. She has changed our world and many of yours. This is a very exciting um, live for us just because. Uh, you've helped put together some of the most common questions that uh, we are asked on a regular basis and that you help with with your clients on a regular basis. And you are here tonight to reveal this knowledge for free for everyone. Yes. Free. For everybody. And yes. I am, I just want to say, I am super happy to be back here talking with you guys. You guys are so much fun to talk with. And I just want to do a product endorsement for you guys. So we have been using, well, we, I mean, my cats have been using the catalyst for a while now. And, um, I, I went away on vacation and then I came back and I was like, my cat's fur is so soft. Like yeah. I just had no idea. Like it just, it was bizarro. I mean, the, so the catalyst is being used in our home and the cat's fur is like super soft. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, for that endorsement. Catalyst is really our, the best seller. It's like everybody's favorite, oh, everybody that's here right now. Um, we've got 51 people here. Uh, yay. They're all, um, they're all about uh, the catalyst as well. Um, well, that's so, one of the best side effects. Of feed, yeah. It's like the side effect of catalyst. A lot of people yeah. use arthritis or digestive issues or whatever. And then they're like, Oh my God, my cat's fur is just, so amazing like her coat is the best it's ever been it's very yeah. exciting it's really it's just cute. it's really just amazing what happens when you give the body the nutrients that it needs um and and the results that you see from that so um your so thank means you. a lot though yeah thank yeah you your very much, means Dr. a whole Kessler. lot and your presence means a whole lot as well joining us here tonight um, can we do a toast to start this off with and then yes. for anyone who's new and doesn't know you could you do just a quick intro yes cheers dr start with the cheers um, no, you're just a short. Yeah. So I'm Marcy and I am a cat behavior consultant. Um, my business is feline behavior solutions and I help people and cats to overcome behavior issues. Um, so that cats stay in homes and don't go to shelters or be kicked out the door or otherwise live 
less happy lives. So um, yeah, I'm all about helping people understand their cats a little bit better and helping um, cats get what they need from their humans. Um, and that's really what it's about. I want cats and their people to have happier, healthier lives together. Um, and so it's really all about education and knowledge. I think for so long, people have treated cats like they're small dogs. And then when cats don't behave like small dogs, it's like, what? I don't, I don't understand this. So get out of here, cat, you know? Um, and that's just, yeah. So cats are just really different animals and dogs. And I help people understand that. So. Oh, and you're, really you, do. yeah, you really do. Um, Trish just dropped, dropped the link to BelineBehaviorSolutions.com. So if you guys want to go check out her website, um, I definitely do. It's pinned here in the comments. Um, thank you, Trish. Thank you, Trish. Um, and, um, and we're, we're just so excited to have you now tonight. We, uh, we really wanted to bring, we, we were discussing over cocktails a few nights ago or weeks was ago. Was that weeks ago? Yeah, it wasn't uh, last week because that was the bad we week. Lose, we lose track of time. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so we were discussing about coming live and you know all the cat behavior questions that we get and all the cat behavior questions obviously that you get. And um, Dr. Koski picked out five of the, the top questions. And what's really funny is that these are like your number one is our number one. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that you're going to be discussing many, so many of the, all of these, because it's going to give all of us, it's going to give everybody that's, that's watching answers, but it's also going to give us more advice to give, right? When it comes to, you know, these, these very common questions that we get. And then to help. she wonderfully, beautifully, so gracefully or Generously. gracious. Gen there you go. Thank Did you. you. Like I was looking for that word. <laughs> Generously <laughs> has agreed to open up for some Q&A. So if you guys have questions, um, we can, you know, she can kind of touch on that. Obviously, many of the questions you need to go deeper into, but mm -hmm. from a, you know, a, a, a outside perspective, many questions she can um she's gonna address from you guys too. So if you have questions, hold off just a moment, write them down, jot them down. Um, and then we're gonna put them in the comments um, after, after, this, uh, after covering the, the very common ones that we have. Yeah. And, and these, I, I have to say like, so these questions that I put together, they're common questions or things that I hear a lot from people. But right now I will say that like most of my business is dealing with cat introductions and helping cats get along better with each other. And that is such an individual situation in each individual home. I mean, yeah, there's some things that everybody can do to get their cats getting along better, but it's kind of a big topic. So I just wanted to like push that off to the side a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have, you know, you have a business built around this. So if there are questions of my God, I've got, you know, I have to separate my cats there or my cat and my dog or whatever, they absolutely five, then you can go to her website. It is, uh, it is again, pinned here in the comments by Trish, Trish Woody, or actually by us. Um, it, and so you, you can click on that and you can set up an appointment with Dr. Koski to, uh, to really, so she can really dive into that situation and, and help you without just general, like, oh, Oh, just you know, confidence building sessions. One thing you say. One thing that I really love though about, about what you just said though is that it's a very individual experience. <laughs> and I think while I think you helped us put together some, you know, four or five really solid tips that really help most all cats kind of acclimate easier. I love that you acknowledge cats as individuals that they have their own personalities and that it takes that kind of getting to know your cat to better know how to help integrate um, new members into the family. I love you. I also love that um, somehow we have turned on closed caption on our Zoom. So now if we speak clearly enough, <laughs> the um, closed caption will be here for anyone that might need it. Jason is talking very slowly for the rest of the live. <laughs> and make sure to enunciate very well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. Let's go with question number one. It's a big one. It is a big problem for a lot of people. And this is, I think, one of the number one reasons that cats have returned to shelters. Why is my cat peeing on my bed? Yeah. And pooping. We get or that a lot too. Or, yeah. Okay. So this is a great thing to start out with because uh, um, 
you know, I, I see a lot of Facebook posts about this. I see YouTube videos about this and it's always like my cat revenge peed all over my stuff. My cat did this because they're mad at me, wanted something, didn't get their way. And that is not at all why cats will seek out our personal belongings and in, you know, more specifically our bed or our couch or even us sometimes. Um, when a cat pees on your bed or your couch or you, something that smells like you, they're doing it for specific reasons. And um, it is often to say something is wrong. Not, it, not everything is peachy in Catlandia. Um, we need to figure out what exactly is wrong. So it could be the, the very first thing when you're, if, if this is a new behavior and it suddenly starts, if it's a new behavior, you need to get seen by a veterinarian or oh, your cat needs to get seen by a veterinarian <laughs> immediately um, because your cat could be in pain and, um, you know, telling you in a really obvious way that their cat, that your cat is in pain, that could involve peeing on the bed or couch or you. Cats will often seek out those places because first of all, they smell like you. And being in a place that smells like you can be re reassuring to them. So they wanna go into a place that smells most like their person so they can get that feeling of security a little bit more. And then also if a cat is in pain while they're peeing, they might be seeking out a softer surface on which to pee. So if for example, your cat has urinary crystals and it hurts to pee because ouch, needles coming out of that urethra, woo, um, that doesn't feel good. So they might start associating pain with the litter box and then go, you know what is a much softer place to pee? It's that bed over there and it smells like my human. So that might be a really good place for me to go. Cats don't understand that we don't like pee everywhere. Um, and cats will often use their urine to intermingle their scent with ours, particularly if they're feeling stressed. It can help them feel better to be surrounded by their own scent. So there are, there's a, there's a potentially a medical issue when cats pee on the bed. There's potentially a stress issue when the cat pees on the bed. It could be that the cat is trying to make the relationship between her and you, they're human, a little bit better by intermingling scents. So there are a number of reasons why your cat could be peeing on the bed. Um, but the very first thing you need to do is go see a vet just to make sure everything checks out. Does that all make sense? Yes, it does. I think that's one of the most important things for people to understand yeah. because I, those first few words that you said, my cat revenge peed or my cat's getting back at me because I didn't do something. I think that really just shows we as humans have a tendency to project so much yeah. And understanding that our cat is is engaging in that behavior because there is something wrong is such a good first step towards compassion and towards problem solving. So I just love your your insight into into especially that issue because it's yeah. such a hard one for so many people. Um, you know, and, you know, a lot of people will try the punishment first. They'll lock their cat in a room with the litter box and be like, "You're gonna pee in it." Now yeah. recognizing that they're the cat psychology behind it, not necessarily the human projection. Yeah, they're not energy. trying to be mean. Right. Right. Yeah. So if if we have already been seen by a vet, what or the cat has already been seen by a vet, um, <coughs> then what are some other reasons that you see in your practice where cats will pee on the bed? Okay. So, ooh, so stress is super like when when there are litter box issues and house soiling issues and everything is um you know medically clear i'm like stress we look at stress and we try to identify those stressors um let me tell you about my cat abby oh we love abby there's abby oh hey baby girl she's sleeping she's she wants us to be quiet but we won't be because she can sleep through anything so um in my old house, I had Abby and um, she mostly lived on the upstairs floor, well, the, the ground floor. And my husband's three cats, Oliver, Momo, and Samantha, um, they could pretty much go anywhere. They didn't really get along too well with Abby, 
Um, so they just kind of segregated themselves in the house. Um, and all of a sudden, well, let me just say, the litter boxes were all downstairs. Um, ugh, mistake. So the litter boxes were all downstairs. And then one day I'm in the bathroom and Abby comes in the bathroom, which is an unusual cats go into the bathroom with me all the time and with everybody else out there who has cats, they go into the bathroom. And yeah, they're like, hey, what you doing? Oh, see, can I get some squidgels? Sure, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she hops up onto the counter and then starts peeing in the sink right in front of me. And I'm like, what is going on here? And uh, I was like, okay, that's really weird. Um, and then that night I wake up because I smell poop terrible, terrible poop smell. And I look over and Abby is pooping right next to the, right next to my side of the bed. And I'm like, what is going on? And I realized <laughs> that Momo was preventing Abby from going down into the basement where all the litter boxes were, because there's only one, you know, one stairway going into the basement where all the litter boxes are. And Momo, that little, mm, um, she didn't want Abby down there at all. So she was completely running Abby out every time, you know. So in that case, we just had to move a couple of litter boxes upstairs and everything was fine. So in that case, there was a litter box avoidance situation, quite literally. Um, and so, yes. So we had to redistribute the litter boxes, which is great. So there could be a litter box of you know, dissatisfaction or avoidance situation in your home, you want to make sure those litter boxes are in tip top, tip -top shape. Um, there's so many products out there. And I know Jay and Adrian, I've talked with you about like the huge disservices that the pet industry has done to cats by creating products that cats really don't like, but that are marketed for humans. So top loading litter boxes, a thumbs down from me <laughs> and many other cats. Um, and I, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of automatic litter boxes. I can see their utility in some, some instances, but generally not a fan. Um, but there are a lot of other things about the litter box that your cat can not like about them. So make sure your litter box is in really good shape for cats. Um, but then and, and things that are not in good shape with cats regarding the litter box, that can increase stress levels. Yeah. So anytime there's a stress issue and then cat urine gets involved, um, a lot of times it's an effort of that cat to surround themselves with their own scent to make themselves feel a little bit more secure. That to me is like, if, it, if a cat is territorially insecure, they wanna say, okay, I'm gonna put my scent here to make myself feel better. And that's why you get cats spraying near doors and windows when they see or smell other cats out there. Um, if they're having a problem with somebody in the household that they're either scared of, or you know, maybe just there's some tension, maybe they go and pee on that person's bed because they wanna intermingle that scent to help them feel a little bit more secure. So, what kind of looks like a slap in the face sometimes to people is actually kind of a backhanded compliment in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, because it's a cat saying, hey, I'm insecure. I need your scent and my scent to get together a little bit better so that I feel more secure. Yeah. So I look at stress a lot and just try to minimize stressors in the home. Yeah. That is a big game changer. That is, you know, a yeah. lot of that information we've, we have been able to share with a, a number of people and there's nothing it, it's like it's like a party. It's like a party when someone realizes the thing that is stressing their cat out. Maybe yeah. it is a litter box that's tucked away in the laundry room, and they've got three cats in one box, and it's a covered box, and it's yeah. scooped once a week, and it's like and you, something as simple as and you, you know, know what I and, mean. And, but when you taught us this to really see the, the litter box from the cat's perspective, it, it's it's so relieving for us and and to to know that you know i mean and understandable like if if all we had was like a dirty unflushed porta potty or yeah, porta potty porta potty you had to go in every day i can guarantee you i'd be peeing in the bush before i you know like if i have just uh uh right. nope i'm going to i'm going to go elsewhere because that's sorry guys sorry about that um but it's also a great reminder too just the the 
the power that scent has for cats. You know, we, we talk, I don't think we're going to touch on it tonight, but the scent swapping that you taught us, yeah. it's just like, what? That's not going to work. What? But it does because scent is so powerful. So better understanding how our cats relate and, and really express themselves through scent yeah. is so helpful for so many of us cat parents. And real quick, because we do have a question here from Becky um, is asking why the thumbs down on the top um, of the top end. What, what's your thoughts on that? Okay. Think about this. Cats evolved in a fairly open desert environment and cats are both predators and prey. So when they're going to the bathroom, they are in a fixed location and emitting stinky things out of their body. And it's basically a red neon sign flashing at them saying, eat me right here, eat me. So the best way cats survive in the wild, and we have to remember that cats are still very instinctual animals. They're not domesticated like dogs are at all. Um, their instincts are really intact. They want to have a, um, place to eliminate where they can see everything around them so that nobody is going to sneak up behind them and you know and the last thing a cat evolved to do is go into a cave-like environment where there's only one entrance and one exit and where there's multiple potential ambush points the other thing i would say about top loading litter boxes actually two more things is um is that if given a choice, and there's been some studies about this, if given a choice between avoiding either clumps or a, a litter box that smells bad, cats will choose to avoid the litter box with clumps. Cats do not like clumps. And so going into the top of a top loading litter box where there's clumps all in there and no light and not being able to avoid stepping on them, that's really, dissatisfying for a cat. Um, and then the other thing is um, cats as young as six, seven, eight years old can begin to get signs of arthritis and going into a top loading box can be a little bit challenging for a cat who's having joint pain. So um, those to me are reasons enough to avoid top loading litter boxes. And I know that Top loading litter boxes can be really great to keep litter scatter at bay and then also keep dogs from snack, snack, snacking on Kitty Roca. Um, I wonder but, why you're going to say that. <laughs> we'll snack a room. <laughs> there are little Scooby snacks in there and <laughs> dogs like them. And it's disgusting because dogs are disgusting animals. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love dogs. I love, I love dogs. I've had dogs. I love dogs, but they're kind of gross. Like, <laughs> ew. The whole eating poop thing. They, they, yeah. I mean, there's reasons behind that. I love, okay, let's yes. continue. Yes. Let's not get sidetracked. Right. So anyway, I understand that there are definitely some advantages to having one of those top loading litter boxes, but there are ways to work around that. Um, One of the that you shared with us earlier as well, when we were when we were going through litter box issues, was that a lot of cats may may be like, "Oh, hey, I'm a newbie here. I'll do whatever needs to be done, right?" But then, as time goes by, we talked about cats being individuals that they will literally become intolerant of something that they can no longer tolerate, and yeah. and so that sometimes it is a sudden change in behavior. And while we want to make sure they have a clean bill of health, it could very well end up being that they're sick and tired of jumping in on dark clumps. Yeah. Right. I mean, gosh, we get that all the time. Like people are on all the time, like literally on a daily basis, people are like, my cat has used its litter box, like all For the 12 time. Years. We've never had everything's, a problem. everything's been fine. And then all of a sudden he's not using the, the box anymore. And it's like, okay. And I have three other cats and one box. And it's like, I'm, pretty sure your cat is becoming intolerant. This is very common that cats yeah. can just become intolerant, you know, clean bill of health, all of that. But, but, but if they have just randomly behaviorally started going outside the box, then, 
and you only have one box and you have multiple cats, even if you have two cats, because you taught us this and it's very evident now we're to like, us. No that way we so, need seven boxes. Like, what? Cats like to, for the most part, cats like to urinate and defecate or pee and poop in separate, in separate boxes. And it's so interesting because I think we have one cat that will use the same box, but we now, because of you also, we get the large storage bins. But So she'll go to one side of the box to pee and then the other side of the box to poop. But all the other cats, it's like when Adrian's scooping the litter, because she scoops litter, not me anymore. Um, it, it, she, she's like, they all pee in this one and they all poop in this one. I like, find it's, it fascinating, but the, the trend. And they don't even use this one. In and, box usage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's but, fascinating, but I, I love that you really help us think about it from their perspective, you know, understanding that they they do have their instincts intact. And, and while all in they are scent. domesticated animals, scent is so important for them and, and understanding that they are predators and prey and that it's the that a lot of times it is the insecurities that cause them to have behaviors that we're like, what the hell is the problem here? What's going on? Being you know what? More compassionately is really powerful. Yeah. Can we talk about how amazing cats are for just a second? Please. Cats freaking domesticated themselves like that seems like such that like domesticating themselves those two things don't go together but that's what cats did humans did not domesticate them they domesticated themselves they saw an opportunity they said oh you know what you're learning how to do agriculture and you have to store your grains yet there's mice and rodents invading your food stores i will tell you job let me help you out with that. Let me just help you out with that. Oh, well. And then the humans are like, uh, okay, um, all right. And then the cats are like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's a good deal. And then, you know, then cats and humans started becoming more friendly with each other. Um, but really, I, I can't think of another animal that really domesticated themselves like cats did. They're brilliant. They're super well, smart. Well. Cats are amazing. And I know we, we're only we're about to get to question number two, but I do have <laughs> I, I just want your insight on this because this is such a this is a question that we get so often. But we're talking about cats' instincts and and how they've domesticated themselves, but they still very much are in many ways little wild predatory predatory beasties, right? Um, why won't my cat let me hold him? Why won't my cat cuddle? Why can't my cat? Why won't my cat? You know. Why does my cat like to be picked up? All of those things. Speak to that just just briefly because I think that that's such an important. That's thing for not one of the questions. I, know, I love but that it's we're, such a. No, but this is yeah. You know, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, okay, just think about cats as individuals. Um, there are people who are huggers, and then there are people who are not huggers. There are people who like to kiss each other on the cheeks when they say hello. There are people who are like, I'm fine just shaking your hand. Thank you very much. Um, and most cats like to get to know a person before they want to you know, start hugging or things like that. And even then, you know, there are cats who just do not like to be held much or picked up. Um, cats being both predators and prey, you have to remember, um, the only time they're really picked up in a safe way in their lives is when they are super, super young and their mom is moving them from one place to another. So to be picked up is kind of something that a predator might do to a cat, which is going to instinctually freak that cat out. Um, they lose a lot of control when they get picked up by a human and they lose a lot of choice when they get picked up by a human. So, you know, and I hear this a lot too, like why I adopted this cat because I want a lap cat um, or my kitten is not letting me pick it pick it up and, and all those things. And it's kind of like, well, you know, I, I want you to respect the way that cat is and how they want to interact with people. Um, you can build over time with some cats, um, some, you know, acceptance of certain behaviors like being picked up and, and held and cuddled. That can take time and trust and learning about each other and being predictable. And the best thing you can do is allow your cat a choice. Um, because if your cat feels like they have no control in an interaction with you, the very first thing they're going to want to do is leave. 
if you let them leave and let them leave any time during an interaction that you're trying to build, that makes that interaction less threatening. And, you know, hey, they might discover, I like being held, it's warm here, I get pets here. But if you try to force it on them, the first thing they're gonna do is just try it out. Got it so hard with some super snug, you know our Pooh Bear, can you imagine if he was a snuggly little I know those few times that he done. like, we, we, it's like a weekend and we're sleeping in and all of a sudden we wake up and he's laying right next to us. And we're like, oh. isn't that just like, that just melts your heart. You're yes. like, I've been accepted by the, the hardest one to, you yes. know. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's a special situation and we don't overdo it. We don't try to like, oh my God, I'm going to spoon you right now. You know, we're like, like it, it, it's like, near. Thank as long you. as we can keep him, I want to touch him a little bit, but I'm not going to touch him too much because he's very comfortable. And this is where he likes to be because he's a, a bubble cat, right? He has his bubble space and he doesn't like to be touched too much. He doesn't like to be, he's not an angry cat anymore. He's not like a, an aggressive cat anymore. He's a kind, loving, Sweet. amazing, beautiful Boy. cat. He just doesn't really like a lot of interaction with humans as far as hands on. He likes yeah. interaction. He just doesn't necessarily like to be over touched. Right. Yeah. Okay. Question number two. This is a good one. Why does my cat get bored with her toys after just a couple minutes? I love this one. Okay. As you know, we'd love to get our cat some cat toys. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this question. What if you were to eat pizza three times a day for two weeks. Well, that would be a problem for Jay, but not for me. <laughs> okay, so Jay, would you ever want to eat pizza again? Never. No. No, I like variety in my diet. It would probably be fine for Lindsay too. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah. But and that cats, is cats like variety too. Yes. Cats like variety. Yes. Novelty is the spice of life. All right. So, every, you know, and cats will have like a favorite toy and something that they can rely. Be, re, th this question actually has two parts. So this is the first part. Variety. <laughs> cats hunt different things that they hunt rodents. They hunt birds. They hunt bugs. They hunt, re hunt reptiles. So a cat might have a favorite toy and it's a mouse. Please, please, please. There's not just one mouse in the world. There are other types of rodents out there. There are many, many mice out there. There are many different types of prey items out there. Give your cat some variety. If you know that your cat likes to play a certain way with that mouse, change the toy, but move that, move that toy the same way you move the mouse, or maybe even just slightly different, change it up a little bit and see what else your cat likes to play with. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's very true. Like variety, 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 variety. Very important. The second thing is we have to remember the prey sequence. And Adrian, I know you were waiting for this. So, you know, the prey sequence. <laughs> so the first, let's go through the prey sequence again, because this is what cats do when they hunt. They go through four steps. They go staring, stalking and chasing, pouncing and grabbing, and then performing a kill bite. But let me ask you, people who have watched cats hunt, do they ever go just one, two, three, four, boom, you have a dead mouse? No, they do not. This is because cats like to torture small animals. It's fun for them. Yeah. And they don't realize that they're causing pain and, and injury and you know, abject terror for small animals. They just think it's fun. So what cats will do is go back and forth along that prey sequence multiple times they reset to that staring phase many times over the course of a play session. So what I hear a lot is, yeah, my cat plays, but it's really hard to engage them because they play for a couple minutes, but then they just get bored and just sit back and watch. And I'm like, that's what they're supposed to do. Don't leave them hanging. Um, it's like you're winding the cat up and then being like, okay, bye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what you want to do is keep moving that toy, start moving it a little bit differently. Remember, it's been injured. So what keeps cats coming back is that transformation that their prey makes over time. 
So they're going to start moving a little bit differently. They're going to start looking a little bit different. We can't change the way the lure looks maybe, but you can change the lure on your wand toy, which is what you should be using to play with your cats. Um, so try to change things up. And then if your cat goes back to staring, just remember that's what cats do. They like beat up on something and they go, okay, now what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, you think you're leaving? No, no, no. Come back here. Right. <laughs> it's so cruel. Okay. What are you going to do now? No. Oh, it's so <laughs> exciting. So the staring phase can be super exciting for cats and I'm sorry, but it can be really, really boring for people, yeah. but just try to keep moving that lure a little bit differently. Maybe, maybe the lure goes around the corner or maybe it goes under something because that, that prey item is trying to get away, or maybe it's starting to move instead of fast, like it did in the beginning, start to slow it down. You know, sometimes the slowest, most intermittent movements are the most enticing. Yeah. Well, and you think about that, I feel like that works out really well for humans. Like if like, you know, say the average person comes home from work and they're like, okay, I need to play with my cat. And they sit down on the couch and they're like, okay, okay, okay. And then they, you know, they, they get them excited and then they stop and they're whatever. But once they know this, they can, you know, even if they're just watching TV, they can keep moving it around a little bit, right? Like, and it's going to get a little bit slower because your wrist is a little bit more tired now. And so you, it gets a little bit slower, but the cat still gets to be engaged and they, and they, and they still get to, you know, you just got to keep going, keep playing. And then, and, but like, I would say, so most cat toys, here we go about pet industry, most wand toys. So the, the wand, the interactive wand toy, that's really the only type of toy that can fulfill all four steps in that prey sequence. Most wand toys are like for kittens. You need a long wand toy that you can really move for your cat and control. The little wand toys that are this long with a string that's this long, those are cute and everything, but it's not going to give your cat a real kind of hunting experience. Yeah. So and that's something that you introduced us to. Uh, you introduced us to a dub bird, a dub D -A bird. And yep. I love that you explained why this was a more uh, engaging toy. You said, think about it from the cat's perspective. You have the dub bird is one of the few wand toys that has a very low profile stick. It's literally yep. a metal rod about an eighth of an inch. And uh, low profile thick in a very low profile string. So what the cats are drawn to is the lure. Yeah, yeah, it's a long. I mean, we're talking like a three foot stick with a three foot or even longer string, but a three foot yeah. string. And that is so incredible because you're absolutely right. The other little wand toys that we have, they're bulky and, and you can see, especially playing with like Pooh Bear, he gets very disconcerted by there being some huge thing coming at him, right? Like yeah. big stick coming at him. But that very low profile wand and string uh, is what you introduced us to with the bird. I've yet to find something that's, you know, kind of along those long same lines, lines, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's really important for people to recognize too, that it's not about, you know, that, that low profile to the apparatus that's giving them that lure is very important for our cats as well. Well, it's super helpful. I think, I mean, just to shout out real quick, like we have, a you know, we have a lot of people that are disabled and they're, you know, in wheelchairs and stuff like that. And this is a great, and they want to keep their cats active and they want to, you know, and these are great. That's a great toy to still get your cat active when move you can physically move around with them. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. And there are other long wand toys out there. Amazon, ugh, the, the DeBird is getting kind of scarce on Amazon right now. It's hard to find. I send the link out so often and I'm like, me too. Me too. it's like, oh, only two left. And, you know, I like, stock in that. we should have bought stock in it. Like we sold it out ourselves, <laughs> right? Well, I bought another one that looked very similar. There is no substitute. I was just putting it together and it broke. Yeah. You know I can't what? use it. Yeah, I think we could, I think maybe we should come maybe up we with should one reach out to them or a recipe a, on how to make your own. And yeah, we should, well, we, we should do that. Yeah, we should work on that because yeah. uh, it is, it is so say, true. It's, it's nothing compares to it. Yeah. I want to say one more thing about the toys though, when it comes to, um, uh, something because something that you have taught us is the novelty part of it because so many of us, us included, we leave toys out for our cats all the time. Look at those lures. Oh, those are the lures. Look I have a bucket of lures. And we can just grab in here and, oh, look, 
a, a rat made of buffalo fur, you know, like, or buffalo. Yeah, it's, they don't worry, they did not skin a buffalo to make this cat toy. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, guys. <laughs> that would be weird. It's, buffaloes are much larger than a... <laughs> Look, a dragonfly. I mean, so just have, to, have, have your lures. They're, you know, not necessarily that cheap, but, you know, it, yeah. it's just have a variety. Here's here's the rat. This is like a hit with most cats. Oh our cats would love that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So. No, I mean, but but saying like not not just leaving them out either. Like even the lawn toys, yeah. no matter what it mice, is, when we leave, balls, or if little... we leave it out all day long every day, they are not as they won't engage with it on their own. It's very they become invisible. The, those toys become invisible. Right. So, so we can all save money. You taught us this. We can all save money and continue to make our cats happy as we buy these new toys or find these new toys or make these new toys. If we put them away and then bring them out for exciting times. And I'm telling you, anytime we open up our, uh, our cat's toy box or our, our wand toys now, we keep in the garage. And so we bring them out for you know and, and even the ripple rug like we bring these things out for special occasions and then put them away so that they get excited about it at you know a certain time and then we put them away now we have the toys that are out all the time but they're almost just like to look at Mo mostly scratchers and carriers but we have like a, a couple well there's a couple good like, little taco toys from your aunt Lindsay. oh and yeah the, the ones that are laying around everywhere with all the time but yeah you're right it's novelty it's variety it's yeah and and understanding that those little toys are, are great and you can play with them, but but there is there are not many things that bring them through that prey sequence, which is so important right. for mm -hmm. them to be able to exercise their instincts. And while it may be barbaric to us, it is um, really important for them. And we've seen you know the confidence building sessions that you uh, told us about with our Pooh Bear game changer. I mean, it's just an incredible and thing. Toys. And, and the other thing is, um, so we we're talking about stress earlier, play sessions are like the thing that can reduce stress for cats. Yeah, I mean, it's a, that is like a, it's a known fact. It's a scientific fact yeah. that exercise in mammals reduces stress. Like just, it's just a known fact. So yeah. we know that for ourselves, our doctors will tell us exercise more to reduce your stress. The same goes for our cats. This yeah. type of play, this type of engagement both mental and physical engagement really reduces stress. Yeah. So that's exciting. So here, speaking of stress, this is something that stresses out a lot of humans. Question number three is, why does my cat wake me up so damn early? Okay, that's a good one. And so many people have issues with this. Big issues. Big issues. So, okay, there are, so there's different ways that your cat might be waking you up. So. I want to make a couple of kind of distinguish between a couple of different things that cats do. So some cats will meow at night, kind of in random times, meow, 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 meow. And, um, you know, sometimes those are older cats and that meowing or yowling in the middle of the night, that could potentially be a sign of dementia or pain. So again, that is something that you definitely want to get you know, your vet involved with. Um, what I'm talking about is typically like your cat starts waking you up at four in the morning um, because, you know, they come into the bedroom and they're like, meow, 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 meow. Or they hop on your bed, on your, on your head and they're like, hey, get up, get up. Or they start attacking you. Um, remember, cats are crepuscular animals. Oh, crepuscular. Um, they're not nocturnal. People think their cats are nocturnal. They're not nocturnal. Cats have eyes and eyes require light. And animals that are crepuscular are very good at seeing at low light levels because this is when their prey items are most active. You know how like in the morning, those birds, they start chirping, early bird gets the worm and all that. Well, the early cat gets the bird that gets the worm. So that's why your cat is waking up early in the morning. She's a crepuscular predatory beastie and she wants to get Dems hunting on so that she can get her <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> and so she could be waking you up because she's hungry. She could be waking you up because she wants to hunt and 
she could also be waking you up because she wants your attention. And you could have been unintentionally reinforcing that behavior by giving her pets, getting up and giving her food, you know, like cats are the best trainers out there. Oh, they yeah. know how to get what they want from their people. Okay. So, um, it, you know, and we are just humans. So we do what our cats want us to do. And then when we do that, they get reinforced for whatever they were doing to get us to do their, their every whim. Um, so remember cats are crepuscular hunters and a lot of people will feed their cats just twice a day in the morning and the evening. That's really not enough. That's not often enough for cats. Um, cats evolve to eat multiple small meals throughout the day. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should free feed your cat because I mean, there are people on opposite sides of the fence for this. Um, and I don't wanna get into diet related issues, but cats have a very short digestive system. They are obligatory, uh, uh, ob obligate carnivores, sorry. Um, and they can't eat a whole lot in one sitting. Um, so they do best with multiple small meals throughout the day. An average cat might need 250 calories a day. A mouse is only 30 calories. So you're not going to, you know, give half your mice <laughs> in the morning and half your mice in the evening. Cats didn't evolve to eat like that. They catch a mouse here, a bird there, and then they kind of take it, they, they groom and then they sleep and then they get up and they catch bird and maybe a bug or two, and then, you know, groom and sleep. And then they do that throughout the day. And then they sleep at night until the birds start chirping and the sun starts coming up. And then they're like, okay, time to eat again. Time or unless they're hungry enough because they've only gotten two meals a day. So if your cat is starting to wake you up early, Take a look at how often you're feeding them. They really shouldn't go more than about eight hours between meals. Um, so take a look at how often you're feeding them, make sure you're feeding them enough. And then I always encourage two play sessions a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, followed by food to initiate that hunt, eat, groom, sleep sequence. Yeah, I love that. We, we share with people quite a bit, especially with the, with, with the cats that are getting up extra early and it's really an issue for them about the indoor feeders. You mm -hmm. have, a, I don't know if the contraption is very nearby, but we love, and this has been so helpful for so many people, uh, whether they're gone throughout the day, they, they've got a 15 hour day they need to work, or they're dealing with this issue of, I feed my cat at 10 o'clock at night, but at four o'clock in the morning, it, she's up or he's up and just, you know, attacking my face, what do I do? Those indoor feeders, explain a little bit about what those are for everybody. Are you talking about the Doc and Phoebe? Um, I mean, yes. But you make your own as well, which I think is a very resourceful and clever for- Yes, uh, yeah, it helps because it's not, because it doesn't cost, it, it's not a, it's yeah. not a, yeah. Right, so you can, um, you can leave food out unless you have ant problems um, and you don't want ants all over your house. Um, you can do a couple of things and you can reset your cat's clock. Absolutely. And that's where play sessions come into play, literally. Um, and so you want to focus those play sessions morning, and evening, but you can also get your cat to start foraging for prey on their own by using some food puzzles. And you can put these around your house. Um, so the Doc and Phoebe, um, little mice feeders, you fill them with a little bit of food um, and then you can put them in different places and your cat runs into them and then like, you know, gets food out. But you can just take toilet paper tubes and put food in there. Um, and, you know, sometimes these depend on using kibble, which, you know, I know you, you ladies aren't so keen on. Um, yeah, we, yeah, but we, but freeze dried raw, the, the type that we use yes. is, it looks exactly the same as kibble, same size, yeah. same everything. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, right. And it looks great in these. Perfect. So you can leave, um, you can put any kind of dryish food into toilet paper tubes, um, and stash those in different places for your cats to find. Um, if you don't want them rolling around all over the place, you can put them in their own individual like tubs. 
like the shallow storage tubs so that the cat can still manipulate them, but just in the storage tub. Um, you can put food into Kleenex boxes. So that's not gonna run around everywhere. You can put, um, you can put food into ice cube trays. Um, you can put them in egg cartons. You can put them in muffin tins. And you can put those in different places throughout your house. And you can get creative, even if you're feeding wet food, or yeah. did I even say raw? If you're dare 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 raw, dare. you can still um, you can still get creative and and make something that that is going to like keep the food fresh and still hide it. It doesn't have to always be an expense. It, you just have to be a little creative. I will say there are some automatic feeders out there that have cold packs in them. And you can set them, this is another good way to, I'm giving away all my good stuff tonight. <laughs> you're, you're Not insane. all the good stuff. I still have stuff. <laughs> some of my good stuff. Um, some good stuff. So there are some automatic feeders out there with cold packs in them. And this is another thing that you can do to help reset your cat's clock. Um, so you can, put raw or canned food into those feeders, those automatic feeders that'll like flip open because um, they have cool packs. And you can set those initially for just before when your cat would normally start like attacking your face because they're hungry. Um, and then just start gradually setting them to go off a little bit later and a little bit later and a little bit later until it's a more crepuscular time yes. um, where you can actually get up and give your cat some food. So real quick, that. because Jill has a question, is it better to have a, a, a play time at a set time or just do it at random times? And you're talking about crepuscular, like morning and night, if we're going to have set time. But do you think it's, do you think like, and I don't mean like to the minute, but no. like, but like set times. Yeah. Like within set. like an hour, hour and a half, like generally around the same time period a day. That's what I recommend. Cats do great on a schedule. So you want to try to make their day, I mean, yes, novelty is good, but in terms of hunting, time to hunt, time to eat, time to sleep, those types of things cats do great on a schedule with. It can help reduce stress and just make their day a little bit more routine and predictable, especially for cats who may be a little bit nervous about when their next meal is coming. Um, so getting them on a schedule is really great. Now, normally I recommend play sessions in the morning and the evening because again, cats are crepuscular and that's typically when they're most active, but you know, there are those weirdo cats out there who instead of sleeping mid-afternoon are like, yeah, let's party. And good. yeah, so I mean, and kittens, of course, I mean, younger cats, they're like wanting to play all the time. So what I say is, especially if you have a little bit of an older cat, Find the time of day when your cat is typically most active and then have a play session at that time, followed by a meal or a snack, something like that. So that. yeah, take advantage of that. I love it. I love that. Okay, next question, big question, something everyone oh. asks every single day, somewhere, if it's not in your feed, if it's not in our feed, then it's in someone's feed someone every single day. Question. How can I get my cat to use a scratching post instead of my damn couch? Oh, goodness. My damn couch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. For every no, there has to be a yes. So if you tell your cat they can't do something, you have to give them something else to do that will meet that need instead. So what you wanna do is look at why your cat is scratching the couch in the first place. You know, a lot of people, okay, can we talk about the pet industry and how they've done such a disservice to cats by creating products that cats don't want or need? Oh, oh my goodness, scratching yes, posts are like the minute. number one. It's, like, it's, what is your it's, cat gonna do with this? It's why, why? why it looks like a chew toy for a puppy, like, Okay, scratching posts that are this tall made with carpet are for kittens. And they're gonna be better, better used when they're flipped on their side. So cats choose large pieces of expensive furniture, not just because they inherently have 
immaculate taste. But those pieces of furniture are sturdy. They're not going to move. They're not going to wobble. They're not going to slide. And they're tall enough so that they can stretch out and just oh, get all, get all down there. Let's talk about all the reasons why cat scratch. Yes. Right? Yeah. So cat scratch for a number of different reasons. First, it's claw maintenance. So it removes the outer shell, the outer, the outer sheath of the nail so that those nails stay in tip top shape for rah. And then um, they also scratch to stretch their back muscles. And then also very importantly, they leave not only a visual mark for other cats, but also a scent mark because they have um, scent glands in their paw pads. So they scratch for multiple different reasons. And they it can also be a displacement activity. So when a cat is nervous or excited, sometimes they'll run over and scratch. Yeah, it reduces stress, yeah. Right, and they'll sometimes do it to get your attention because they know if I scratch on this couch, I'm gonna get her attention. <laughs> and that's what they do, so. Who do you recommend? So I think a lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of times, I, our cats are actually pretty good with uh, some of those cardboard scratchers and I love watching them use them because they will actually be able to put their whole body weight on them, yes. scratch out and scratch. Um, but also, you know, cat trees, some of these cat trees are, are great because they are very sturdy and they've got good, you know, they got the rope scratchers. Yeah. Um, some other ideas I've seen are the two by fours wrapped in rope attached to the wall where cats actually scratch and yeah. or climb them. Yeah. What are some of your go-tos as far as the yes to the no of the expensive furniture? Right. So I love those cardboard scr cat scratchers. If your cat can like to scratch horizontally, perfect. Yeah. Um, and you can put catnip or silver vine powder on anything to make it a little bit more attractive to scratch. Yeah. Um, so there's two key things that you need to do. Um, if a cat is scratching a sofa, what you wanna do is you wanna find out what kind of scratcher they like. And if that's cardboard, great. If it's sisal, great. Um, if it's a vertical carpeted thing, great. Whatever it is, put it right next to where they're scratching, right next to where they're scratching. It doesn't have to live there permanently, but you just wanna put it right there so that there's, oh my gosh, a choice. And now we're going to encourage your cat to make the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> and the right choice is the one that gets rewarded. So if there is a behavior that can be expressed two ways, and one of those ways gets consistently rewarded and the other way gets consistently ignored without rewards, which one is gonna start happening more frequently? Right. So put put a scratch, put an accept, it has to be an acceptable scratching surface for your cat. Yeah, right next to- Yeah. Not, not, not the horizontal ones, but like the ones that have like a cardboard base with like a stick coming out of them that yeah. has like, and it's like, why well, put have, a scratcher right next to it? We should just Look, throw it away, like, but I know, we a have friend one gave of those. it to us. They like left it at our door. They were like, we're your kitties. Yeah, so we're like, oh, sweet. But, yeah. they, but yeah. it's not something that they use. It is not an acceptable replacement for the side of the couch. No. Right. At all. Yeah. So your cat is basically trying to tell you what they like to scratch and where they like to scratch. Yeah. So use that information get a tall scratcher or get something of a similar material or try something else. And if they don't like it, they don't like it. You can try something else again, um, but then put it right there. And then when they start to use it or when they come over and you think they're gonna scratch, pull the treat over it or dangle the toy over it. So they have to reach up and then they go, oh, this is kind of nice. And then they start scratching and reward them when they use that scratcher. You can give them a treat, but it doesn't always have to be a treat. It can be, petting, it can be praise, it can be tossing a toy for them, it can be giving them catnip. I mean, it does not have to be a treat. So just reward the behavior that you do want them to see. Yeah. More yeah. A couple of our cats really love more than treats. Um, Twister specifically isn't even into treats, but he will do the right thing when I follow it up with good boy. That's he all. I don't even have to pet him praise. anymore. Praise. He loves that verbal praise. That is enough for him to do exactly what we, which leads us to the next question. How do we train a cat? Can oh, no, no, no. Can you? The next 
the next question was not, how do you train a cat? You can train a cat? Yes, that was the question. And the answer is yes. <laughs> oh, oh, that is such a perfect segue. You're brilliant. I know. <laughs> you can train a cat? What? I get this so much. Like, I don't, I don't even believe that people think that you can't train cats because cats are the master trainers. Yes. Yeah. They this is how domestication on their end worked. They knew what they had to do to get humans to do what they wanted humans to do. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, and if you look at it like that, it's like, of course we can train them. If they can train us, we can train them. We just need to flip their game on top of them. Yeah, we just so, have to try to be a little smarter. Yeah, no, it, that's not going to happen. Like, <laughs> any of us. It doesn't work really well. <laughs> but what I have learned is that usually a cat, there will be something that they want, something that they want to work for. And whether you're doing clicker training or just are trying to get them to use the litter box or use their scratcher or whatever, or accept petting. You know, there's something that your cat wants, even cats who um, you're even trying to socialize. And this is kind of an extreme case. So cats who are extremely fearful of humans, what do they want most? They want that human to go away. So that can be the reward. And that's how you get them to start exhibiting more confident, behaviors is when you see just a hint of that confident behavior, you're going, okay, good job. I'm out of here. So you can, you, you just need to figure out what that cat wants and then use that as positive reinforcement for their behaviors. Even if you have to shape that behavior from one step at a time, working up to the behavior that you want. I love that so much. I think that this is what makes you uh, so invaluable to all of us all the time. And incidentally, why you still have all your goodies in your bag, because I think that dealing with cats as individuals is the most significant thing. And a lot of times it does take someone with your ability to speak cat and help us better understand what our, what our little ones are going through or how they're, you know, because we can say, well, this is what he's doing and this is what he's doing. And you can help translate that for us. And when we start treating our cats as individuals, we get those, we're able to better help them, help us help them be yeah. happier cats. Yeah. It's really a remarkable gift that you have. It really is. Yes. That's why I'm obsessed. I love it. Okay, so. Yeah, I just wanna I, mention for everybody on Facebook right now, Jay's super clever. She pulled up the comments on my phone and put them over on her side of the computer so that I wouldn't be distracted by them. Because I'm always reading. That's comments. actually not why I did it. It was the only oh. place that it could sit. And mine, um, Kathy, um, um, Princess Zippy, mine, when I just pulled up my phone, all it said was Princess Zippy is watching. Princess Zippy is watching. Princess oh, Zippy weird. is watching. I was like, give me your phone. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, Princess Zippy. It's stuck on, it's stuck on you, Princess Zippy. My hey, phone yeah. is you, Princess <laughs> Zippy. It's gorgeous oh. for you. To my little baby girl. So Angel. I want to. Um, I'm sure we've got some questions. In oh here. yeah, I mean, I was trying to look up, and and there was there's a lot of comments. So I kind of okay. Here's actually Alfred had a, a good question. Why do cats lick or chew soft plastic? Uh, Excuse me, Seti Seti, cute name, loves licking plastic bags. How do I stop them from licking plastic? Okay, so um, a lot of plastic bags, like from the grocery store. They have a slip coating on them that is made and sometimes it has an animal derivative in it. And so sometimes that slip coating actually tastes good for cats. So they might like the taste of the plastic bag because of the, the slip coating. Um, but sometimes they also just like that crinkle. Um, and so I would just encourage you to keep those plastic bags out of their reach. Um, yeah, we, it's Zoro is in love with them as well. And we we let him play with it for a certain time because I think he loves both the tallow and the and the crinkle. But it's like his bet when groceries come in, 
He's got to have a bag and he has to walk around with it and he's got to hide it and then he's got to bring it back and then he gets Maybe bored. Get another or, one. Or, and then he, he ends up getting bored because it's not moving around enough or whatever. And then we take it and we throw it away. But we I, always let him play with it for a minute. Supervised. supervised. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say like, at the very least, you need to cut the loop on those handles because, oh my gosh, I've had so many clients whose cats were completely traumatized by getting their heads stuck in the handles of either plastic or paper bags. So yeah, yeah. he actually Big. loves to put his head through it. And I feel like sometimes so it's like he wants it to be his cape. Like he is Superman because he, he always that. puts it through and then he, and then he walks around and then he licks it and he it and goes I, out behind I, him. Now in stark contrast, some of other cats will get their heads stuck through there and then they are terrified because yeah. they cannot escape the crinkle bag. And that, right. that, that's why, yes, either yes. keep them out of reach or only, only let cats that enjoy only them, supervised. enjoy them supervised. Yes. yes. Um, another one, Karen said, Karen said, my cat keeps rolling around in the kitty litter. What is causing this bizarre behavior? Oh, okay, so a couple of things could be happening. So um, first of all, that's disgusting. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Good so some, cats, some cats actually just like to play in it, um, which is, you know, um, so you might want to encourage play by using other types of toys that they can be engaged in. Um, and, you know, that just happens. I remember when Abby was a kitten, I could not get her from just playing in the litter box. Like it was just, she was like an expert litter flinger. She was just, she thought it was so much fun. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this one, this one she was, was just like eight weeks old or something it was we put down the first litter box and it had the um i can't remember See, which litter said, it was but don't she just that. went swimming in it she's like yes yes, yes. and we were like uh-oh <laughs> so, well but some cats do they love that play and they love to dig in it and kick it up and all that other cats will will uh we get that question a lot too of they hide in their litter box they sleep in their litter box they what what can you say to that? Yeah, I think you kind of touched so, on it from at the top or eat their litter. Yeah, so that would be more of a case where a cat is feeling a little bit insecure. And um, remember, when cats are feeling insecure and stressed, one thing that can help some cats is to be surrounded by their own scent. And what place is kind of own scent central? It's central with a S C. I love that. Central. Um, <laughs> it's cat central. Um, it's the litter box. And so if you see your cat just hanging out, sleeping in the litter box, and you think that your cat might be stressed, that that's problematic. Um, you know, we need to start looking at what's going on in the environment that is causing your cat stress. Is your cat feeling okay? Um, you know, we need to something something needs to happen um it's not just exuberance like oh goodness this is so much fun it is more like i i need help um, this is where i'm gonna oh, yeah. yeah that's oh yeah. i don't think i've thought of that thank you for that wow okay um how do you stop char said how do you stop a cat from attacking a cat they've been around for six years why does this happen oh so I'm, I'm just wondering if it's like all of a sudden. Um, yeah, I, I, that's all the, that's all the sounds comment like we have. So they've been together yeah, for six sounds years. like it's probably out of the blue, probably redirected aggression, you think? I mean, that, that could be, I, I see definitely a lot of cases where cats are, you know, best buds, bonded, siblings have been together their entire lives or best friends. And then all of a sudden one day, it's like they didn't know each other. One cat is attacking the other. The other cat is terrified. Um, and a lot of times, this is because of redirected aggression. Um, and this could happen for any number of reasons. But um, quite often, it's because you have cat A and cat B are indoor cats. These are the cats who are buddies, right? Cat A is sitting at a window. And then all of a sudden, cat C is outside 
who does Cat C think he is coming in, sitting in my yard? Oh my God, I want to get that cat so bad. And so Cat A is just getting completely like wound up. I am so pissed off at the Cat C and oh, just making him feel so feel insecure or like I'm going to, you know, and then Cat B over here, he's been in the kitchen this entire time and he just comes sauntering out and he's like, oh, hey, Cat A, how are things going? And Cat A is like incredibly worked up and he just goes a pow into Cat B because he's transferred all this aggression and this pent up energy towards Cat C onto Cat B. He goes, a pow. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does. Um, it happen with our own cats. It's it's really quite horrifying. It, it I know is. we're making light of it in a way, but there is nothing quite so horrifying as a full blown cat fight. And when you see that kind of, especially when it's like when it's, the cats that love each other, siblings. Yeah. Oh my God, it's it is heart stopping. And terrible. a lot of a lot of times, cat guardians do not see the initial incident. They don't know that something isn't even happened. Sure, they come home. Yeah, they come home and all of a sudden their their cats hate each other and they're like, what is going on? So, and I will say too, that redirected aggression cannot only happen between cats, but also cats and people, cats and dogs. It can happen in a lot of different ways. And it's, it's very, it's quite serious. Um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier how our cat's instincts are so intact. These are our little wild predatory beasties that we are very grateful to have as our domesticated yeah. animals. But that that level of domestication is not necessarily as high as we think it is. Yeah, right. And so taking the time to recognize when a situation like that has happened, even if we don't see the initial, we see that huge change in behavior. Um, what are some of your go-to steps for that? So the sooner you can separate the cats after that initial incident, the better chance you're going to have of being able to get them back together sooner. So if you suspect that redirected aggression has happened, keep the cats separate, maybe even overnight. And then slowly, you might just do a little sight test. Like what happens if the cats see each other? Are things okay? All right. Keep an eye on them. If things are not okay, you know, usually one cat will like, or, you know, hiss or something, uh -huh. um, keep them separated. And then you might have to go through a, re a, a, a slow reintroduction process. Again, it is kind of, it's very, um, it, it's an individual process. I mean, there are certain steps you can take that are fairly well documented um, in terms of an introduction process, but um, cats are going to really vary in terms of speed, level of exposure, um, you know, so just go slow. And, you know, if you need help, reach out to an expert and that doesn't have to be me. It could be anybody who knows what they're doing with cats. Um, you know, I think really feeling behaviors are probably one of the most underutilized gifts that we cat parents could avail ourselves of. I think yeah. just how much you've changed how we're able to look at our cats and the things that we've implemented just from knowing you and learning from you. Um, I think that a consultation with a feline behaviorist is something that even at the time, we didn't even know we needed as much as we needed. It's really, really a gift. So um, absolutely, especially in multi-cat households, I think there's so many issues that people are constantly dealing with and they uh, feel like it's you know something that they've got to give one of them up or they're yeah. It's just like, no, there, there are answers, but again, it's an individual situation, as you always say. And I think that that's why what you provide, the service that you provide is so invaluable. Yes. And I will say that I, you know, me and a lot of colleagues right now, because the pandemic happened, people started really adopting a lot of cats. And so when the pandemic started, me and a lot of other cat behavior consultants, our businesses just kind of went, mm. Um, and, and it's, it's great that people were adopting a lot of cats, but, um, and it, it's really great that people started recognizing that cat behavior consultants are out there and it's a resource for people. Um, but like my services I'm booking into August right now. Um, so like, and a lot of my clients are, 
um, you know, they have to wait for, you know, four to six weeks. I'm bringing on a, a new consultant soon. Oh so excited about this happening. So excited. Um, so I will be able to get some of my clients seen sooner than they were even anticipating, which I am absolutely excited about. Um, so that's wonderful. But I did want to mention just a couple of groups out there who you can look up and see if there are consultants in your area or find a virtual consultant um, in case you can't wait, you know, a few weeks. Um, so there's the Pet Professional Guild. And if you go to petprofessionalguild.com, I think, or it might be .org, but it's Pet Professional Guild, you can find a consultant there. You can also find a consultant at the um, International Association for Animal Behavior Consultants. It's the IAABC.org. And you can find consultants there. IAABC.org. Yes. Yes. Say the word. What's that? Say the words one more time. IAABC.org. That's International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of resources. I mean, and okay, so, I'll, you know, if I can, I'll pimp my own Facebook page. Um, I have a private Facebook page and I have some wonderful moderators who are helping people with their cat behavior issues. So, we if you want a lot too, by the way, what's that? <laughs> we pimp your page a lot too, by the way. <laughs> like, Thank you. you need to go. <laughs> just go to, I'm just go there. Yeah. So if you want to join that page, it is a private group. So you have to answer three questions first. Please answer the three questions. They're easy questions. Um, and uh, you can get limited free help there. Um, but then try those other organizations or just email me um, or go to my website and we can get you on the calendar. Yes. So. And, and your group page is feline behavior consult. No, no. feline mm -hmm. behavior solutions. Yes. Yeah. That is the group name. Yep. Right. Feline behavior solutions. Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm always sending people there. I didn't realize that there were questions. That yeah. The first question is, do you have a cat behavior question? And you can say no, you can say yes, you can say what your cat behavior question is. There's no wrong answer to that first question. The second question is, do you understand that medical issues cannot be discussed in this group and they need to be addressed by a veterinarian? You know, that's like a, a cover your ass type of question. You yeah. must answer yes to that question. <laughs> the third question is, do you agree to read the rules of the group? And you have to answer yes to that question. So three. Easy, easy question. Okay. Easy peasy, easy peasy that. and free. That is awesome. I love that you guys offer that too, just because it is so, I mean, like there are a number of issues, like a lot of these questions here that maybe things that we never even thought about before that could really be a huge help to our cat's happiness right now. Yeah. And to be able to offer some of those general uh, ideas or direction is really, beautiful okay. yeah so thank and you, you offer for so you much of that in your group as well and um you're uh, just just to throw out there um a, I, even though there is a bit of a wait it's not breaking the bank to get a um to get a, con, a, a consulting um appointment with you right. so um so if you guys have an issue that it's every, like yeah. okay i listened to you know crazy cat ladies told me to try this i'm listening to the lives i'm joining online. the groups i've read this online i've tried a b and c and i still have an issue it's because you have your cat is an individual and it needs to be addressed individually yeah. mm -hmm. and dr marcy koski is available to you to help your kitty. So if you guys need her assistance, please, or want her assistance just to yeah. better understand She's your worth cat, the way and worth totally every penny. worth the way and totally worth the penny. Yeah. Um, so but I love too that you provide those other resources too, especially for people that feel like, oh, I need to talk to somebody tomorrow, yeah. you know, help people find what they need, yes. where they need it. So thank you yeah. for sharing that as well. Mm -hmm. But you're just an absolute gift to the entire Joy. community. Thanks. I feel like I don't even, I can't see a time anywhere. I don't even know what time it is. No, I have but no I, idea, I have a but feeling that we are way over our hour. We're definitely over, yeah, over time, but 
but that's how it works when it comes to us. We love to hear you uh, speak. We love to learn from you. We've learned so much from you over the years. And even tonight, we've learned so much more. So thank you so much for joining thing, us. Right? I know. Any, any final thoughts from you? I know that I feel like we covered a ton of topics. Yeah. Is there anything lingering in your frontal lobe that you want to share? No, I'm just, I'm so grateful to um, be invited and talk with you guys. It's always a good time talking with you and your audience is so great too. I know they really love cats and um, I think we're all here because we just want cats to have their, you know, best lives possible. And, um, you know, I'm, that's what I want to do. I just want to help cats and their people live really happy lives. So um, you know, and, and we do have businesses, but we're, we have those businesses because we love cats. And so it's, you know, I'm just happy to be here and, um, be able to share some of the knowledge that, that I have. And, um, you know, if people need help with creative problem solving, that's, that's what I'm here for too. Uh, so we love you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. For joining Sounds us like tonight. she might be open to another follow-up sometime. I think we have cocktails. We'll, we'll <laughs> chat. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. talk. We'll talk. I'll we'll have my people call your people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Uh, we love you, Dr. Koski. Thank, thank you so you much so for much. joining us. Thank and you. We'll see you very soon. You and thank you guys, guest. everyone, for joining us on this Monday's merch. Yes. One more shout out. If you guys are interested in getting a calming solution, all natural calming solution for cats, Monday's Cat Calm show. is our product of the week this week. You can get it for 5% off using the discount code. Calm5. Five. Calm5. Five. Calm5. Five. Calm five. Check it out. On our website, link Calm is in our bio. Five. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining <laughs> Dr. us. Dr. a joy and a gift. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone who is here tonight. I'm gonna go back to your Facebook and read the comments I made. And I'm gonna go pee. I love right. you guys. Love you, thank <laughs> you Dr. Koski. Bye.